weeks or something, something like that. Um, I really get excited about seeing all the different backgrounds. I mean, whether they're actual or virtual, they're really, really fun. Um, so watch me work if anybody doesn't know. Probably most of you know by now, I'm just gonna say it anyway. Watch me work, we've been doing this for 11 years, uh, mostly live at the public theater and also in venues around the country, around the world we've been doing this. I, we, I've been doing this. <laughs> um, uh, and what we usually, Oh, and recently in the past three years or so, maybe four years, HowlRound has come on board to help us live stream our live show. And they've come on board to help us create this beautiful community during this difficult time. Um, and uh, so big thanks to the public theater and to HowlRound. This is what we do during our time together. We, I'm looking around for my, my, uh, you know, my timer. Anyway, we, um, we work together for 20 minutes and then we talk about your work and your creative process in the time remaining. And that's all it is. What we don't have time for is to give an uh, actual uh, critique on something you might have written, but we do have plenty of time to talk about your work and your creative process and give sort of develop conversations that help all of us regardless of where we are specifically in our work or what specifically we're working on. Okay, so Amber is going to tell you how to get in touch while I go and find my timer. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, if you would like to ask a question during the questions portion and you are inside of the Zoom, please click the raise your hand button. It should be in the participants tab. That's more than likely at the bottom of your screen if you're on a computer or laptop. If you're on an iPad, more than likely at the top of your screen. If you are doing the stream at howlround.tv, you can ask questions via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram. And you can also ask questions via the Watch Me Work Twitter, which is at Watch Me Work um, SLP. Be sure to use the hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And that is all. Oh, you're muted, SLP. Thanks, Amber. Thank you. The advantages of having a very small apartment is that you lose something. It, it's, it's really nearby. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, okay, so we're going to work for 20 minutes and then we will um, spend some time talking about you and your work. Okay, here we go.
zur Blutschuss, du weißt, zur Blut.
right. All right. All right. So that was 20 minutes of action. Now we're going to have uh, about 40 minutes of dialogue. So uh, who's, does anybody, ha who's got a question? Does anybody have a question? Tabitha has a question. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hi. Wow, I didn't think I'd be first. <laughs> hey. Um, first of all, thank you for doing this. Uh, this has been it's literally kept me sane and like kept me working so i really appreciate that it's great to like have a community and kind of sort of have accountability uh Thank so you. yeah i've been working on a couple different projects and like uh -huh. bouncing between, but the the newest one is like this idea that i've had for a couple of years for a book that is now like turned into a trilogy in my mind doesn't exist yet will exist but um i had been thinking along the plot lines and as I've been like going I've been like you know outlining and whatnot and I'm finding myself way more interested in like the latter half of the plot and forgetting how I even got there and so now I don't know how to go back to the start if that makes any sense I'm still pretty early on in the process so I don't know how to get back to the beginning and get interested enough to like make that first part so I can get to the part that I'm like you know itching to create I would I would say that's a great question Tabitha I would say maybe do the part that is itching first there's nothing wrong with you know just if you know the part that's itching it's okay to write that and then after that's written go back and write the other ones you know or that doesn't you say, no, I can't write the... Oh, you froze. Or oh, I froze. Oh, oh uh, I didn't freeze. Uh, am I frozen? No. no okay. I no, I froze. I are. probably have not It's okay. It's okay. But does that, does, that make, does that make a kind of sense to work on the part that's most compelling to you right now? Yeah, I'm so detail-oriented. I feel like maybe i'm just like getting scared that like i'm going to write that part and then like filling things in i'll either like go com somewhere completely different like when i'm writing the first part after having written the second part and have to like rewrite the whole second part or whatever yeah that might happen but it might not i mean e either i mean this these are your choices right so you've got this great idea for a trilogy you are really excited about one of the later parts um, don't really have an idea about the first part and your choice is either write the part that you're really interested in first and maybe through the writing of it you will come to know what came before right or maybe you'll find out that the first that that part that you're itching about the, the later part might actually be a beginning you know and you might be going forward from there you don't know it's a creative process or you can sit and you can sit around and go gee how did we get here you know what I mean um, if that doesn't hold you up too much, though, as you are detail oriented, hello, this is our detail oriented member of the family. Yeah, go, go and do something with yourself. Um, sorry. Um, uh, you, right. So you can sit there and say, hmm, how did we get here? You can, you can spend some time thinking about it, though. You can do some outlining on the part that you're most interested in. And then once you really feel that you have that go back to the part that you have less of a clue about and do that if that's more helpful. Gotcha. You know, so you have it, you have a choice. You have a choice. Oh, I froze again. It's okay. You not, now you're not, now you're not, now you're moving. Oh, now, now you're frozen. Where are you, Tabitha? Where are you calling from? <clears throat> oh, you're frozen. You're frozen again. Okay, it's okay. Um, if she comes back with- we'll, we'll, The internet we'll, connection is so- Oh, it's all right. Okay, but does that make sense? Are you are you hearing? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. That totally makes sense. I think that's something that like I had thought about, but I needed someone else to give me permission to do. Okay, either one. You can do either one. You can you can try to figure out the first part before you go forward, or write the part that you're most interested in, and figure out the first part later. It's important to just write. That's the most important thing. Just do the work, you know? Okay? All right. Thanks, Tabitha. Um, next, we have 
Catherine. Catherine, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hey, Catherine. Hi. Thank you so much for this daily burst of inspiration, and thank you for your generosity. Uh, well, thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, my question is has to do with um, putting the work out there for a reading. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about um, when you get a draft that's ready for someone else to read, whether it's a trusted reader or like a big public reading, what do you find are the most productive kinds of questions to ask the people who are hearing you? And are there any unproductive kinds of questions that you know of? Right. Um, I mean, you know, you might want to know, you, of course, we want to know as, as, as creators, as creative artists, you know, did you like it? You know, <laughs> you know, you can ask that. That's not a bad question to ask or just get a vibe in the room. You know, do they, do they seem like they're, they're into it? Oh my God. Is that Joe Exotic behind you, Julian Christopher? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Just look, I, I, I'm, I'm obsessing about backgrounds, people's backgrounds. All of you have such interesting backgrounds. Um, but you know, you can, you can, um, you want to know, you want to get the vibe in the room if they liked it, maybe what resonated with you guys, maybe what worked, you know, what didn't. Um, what are unhelpful questions? I don't know. I don't know if, if any questions from the writer are unhelpful, but they might set you up for disappointment, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, did you like it? You know, some people you know, if they come out in the, that question with a lukewarm answer, then you're going to feel yucky. You know, it's going to be hard. Yeah, you, you know, I write, it's it's usually not realistic and it's pretty nonlinear. So, and it's totally the plot comes last. So it's sometimes in readings, people, I've had people get just angry, like, I don't get this. I don't get it at all. And yeah. it's, there's still productive things they can say to you. Right, right. Yeah, well, definitely. So, I mean, you could, it could also be helpful to have a reading to have two readings, you know, to have like a, if you have a reading with just the actors and if you're going to direct it yourself or if it's just, just the core team and then widen it up a little bit. So you're working with actors so they get familiar with it um, before you sort of open the door. So the circle will be small yeah. and then gradually get bigger. And again, you're not looking for um, approval necessarily, you know, that kind of approval like, oh, you're, you know, you're looking for just ideas and notes that will help you take it to the next level yeah like if an actor says like i just don't get the through line or i don't understand my relationship with so and so or something yeah, that's helpful that's yeah. helpful and also you can say to the to the the readers did you understand the relationship her relationship with her you know did you get that did you get where she's coming from do you get why she wants the things she wants you know you can ask you can ask those questions did you get these these story points these beats yeah Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck with it. Good luck with your, your Thanks. work. Thanks, Catherine. All right. It looks like we have a question from Beverly. Beverly, are you there? Yes, I'm at. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, my question is about process right now with all that's going on in the world. I'm finding it, I used to have kind of a good practice. And right now with time being so sort of elastic, it feels like a little bit and days can suddenly go by and I haven't written. I'm wondering if you have any, I don't know, uh, tips or things mm -hmm. that work for you to help mm -hmm. you focus on writing and mm -hmm. not feel pressured to write the King Lear we're all supposed to be writing right now. <laughs> Oh, the Queen Lear, actually. Um, <laughs> just saying. Uh, the female leaders are bringing it, people. Yeah. It's kind of exciting. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Beverly, um, I, I think a schedule helps, you know. Give yourself kind of a gentle schedule, you know. Some kind of guideline to get you. Like, I mean, it's kind of like outlining, you know. Outline your day you know, yeah. um, a little bit, um, give yourself a, at whatever clock, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, and then I'm going to go for a walk or whatever. I don't know where you live. Where do you live? Uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh -huh. Oh, you have that accent. We love, we love Canadians. <laughs> um, but you know, you have, but you know, go for a walk outside and then you're going to do whatever, you know, call yeah. a friend or, you know, sort of 
organize your day a little bit, give yourself a schedule. I think it's going to help. And then yeah. write from, you, you know, and you can, you can decide I, I'm going to write the 20 minutes, three times a day, you could say. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. not a big, huge, you know, oh my God, I'm, you know, um, I find myself surfing, you know, and looking at CNN more than I'm writing, you know, that's, yeah. this is all okay. Um, but you do want to get your, your work done just because it's going to give you that, that good feeling. Um, yeah. And it's, you're going to keep you connected with the spirit. Um, do you, do you use uh, apps to block the internet when you write or do you have self-discipline? Uh, no, and I have an eight-year-old, and there's no app that blocks him. As you, did you see him coming in a window? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. so there's no, you know, there's no use. There's no, there's no help. He used to run around the apartment. Well, I mean, again, I have a very small apartment. It's a one-bedroom apartment, very small. And me and my husband and my son, our son, we live in here together. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, I have to really focus. It's great because I have to, I have trained myself. I have taught myself to focus a lot uh schools are out you know yeah for the rest of the academic year in new york city and elsewhere and those of us who are homeschooling and not uh, able to go outside we don't have a backyard you know we don't have a yard of any kind yeah um, he just runs around the apartment all day yeah Bless his heart. so yeah there are no apps I'm, but i'm sure there are you know if you know of apps I'm, i i know there are some yeah uh, you can just turn it off you can just turn off your wi-fi you know what i'm yeah. saying you can just uh Go up to there to the whatever bar and click that thing and turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. That, I find that I, you know, I think, oh, I'm going to research this one little thing and then oh, yeah. suddenly I'm gone. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. Stop doing that. Yeah. 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 Well, you don't, you know, that's, uh, you can also give yourself, you know, 20, you know, I'll research it for five minutes. Set your timer. Five minutes research. Here we go. I'm going to research. It goes off. Okay. I got to go back to the writing. My 20 minutes was spent, you know, 15 minutes writing and five minutes of researching. Yeah. Or I'll research it when I'm done. After yeah. my 20 minutes of writing, I'm going to research for five minutes. Yeah. You know? So just try to try to use what you have to create the kind of structure that you need. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Good question. Thanks. It's Beverly. All right, next we have Rob. Rob has a question. Rob, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Thanks, Amber. And hi, SLC. Hey. Uh, so, so thank you for doing this. This has been really great, like the past few weeks for me, in terms of just making sure I sit down every day and do something. And some days it's just this, and other days it's a few more hours. And like that's felt really good to work on some project every day and I want to take that win and I do feel good about that but what I'm doing I'm finding is I'm ending up working on like five or six different projects like whatever I feel inspired about each day I'll go to that and that's also nice but I'm struggling with like nothing is getting finished and nothing is feels like it's approaching the finish line so I am making progress, but I guess, how do you know when to like, just focus on one thing and get to the end and finish it? Or, or is it okay to just bounce back and forth? That's a great question. You can totally bounce back and forth if that is pleasing to you, you know, uh, but if you're also looking at it going, I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth. Are you avoiding something or is you play, you, you play with it a little bit and then it gets difficult. And so you want to do something else. That's all okay. And if you want to, you know, usher something toward the finish line, then you got to put the time into it, right? So, I mean, it's okay to have little five different projects. Look, they're five days of the week. How, I mean, they're five days of the week, the work week, although work, right? But they're five days of the whatever it's called, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And you can work on one project for every day. You can yeah. do that. You know, you can pick, you just look at your project, which two maybe am I most excited about? This one and this one. Okay. For the next week, just week, I'm only going to work on this project or this project. I'm not going to work on the other ones yet. I'm gonna yeah. leave them for a minute and then um, I'm gonna, uh, do you see what I mean? So yeah. you, yeah. you just gotta pick two, pro two, of the, two of the five, let's say, okay? Work mm -hmm. on those two and see if they progress and they will. 
And then you can say, okay, week number two, um, I'm going to keep working on these two projects. You work on those a little, or I'm going to switch out. I'm going to work on the two others, usher those along a little bit, or I'm just going to work on one for this week. Yeah. Okay, you know, we talked about the lazy Susan, which I love because that's part of my name, but you know, the dim sum, the lazy Susan, and you know how it has things on it. You just, you're stationary and the lazy Susan spins around, right? So you work on one project for a little bit and then you move the, the, the circular revolving thing a little bit. Yeah. And then there's the next project there for you, right? So you can work on multiple projects at once, but you have to put the time into each one. Cool. Okay, so Thank try you. that. Pick two projects or one or two projects next week. Just yeah. work on those. That's helpful. And to think about it sort of on a weekly basis yeah. to actually see. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then put them down and choose two others if you want. Yeah, you know? cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. All right, next we have Chris. Chris, are you there? It's me. Yes. Hi, Chris. Hi. Chris, how's the poem coming? Yeah, the woman uh, is, she's opened up. She's okay. become really chaotic by making her a real person and not just a symbol. Uh huh. And she cracks me up and I love it. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to, I'm sure it's going to take me to a much better place. It, I, I realized she was a symbol. And once I started doing what you said about making her specific, so that's been great. Fantastic. Um, which reminded me of my next question, which is um, you talk a lot, about, a lot about dating, about the, think of it like dating. Um, and there's another poem that I've been working on for two years. It's not, it's not narrative. It's a, a poem that's super important to me. But when I read it over, I am just, I love it at the beginning. I'm full of energy. And then I get to a part I respect it, but I, I start to get really tired and drained, which reminds me of some dates, if you know what I'm saying. So like, this is a great, you know, it's, I respect it. It's good. It's like intellectually, I, but I start to lose affection. I start to lose energy and get drained. And so I'm wondering if that's related to what you mean about thinking of it like dating. I try, I, I'm been working on that poem today, trying to loosen it up and, right, and right. make it be like a date. Right, right. Well, the good thing about writing um, or the creative process is that unlike dating, you can change your writing. You really, you know, you really can't. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you know, you gotta take your spouse or your date for who they are, okay? But the cool thing about the creative process is you can actually circle you can actually go through your your manuscript chris and where you feel drained and kind of respectful but not as excited you can circle that and say to your you know write down in the margins what about this isn't clicking just what act, act as if you didn't write it you know what i mean if you were if it was a friend or were a friend who had sent it to you read my beautiful poem you know you get this part isn't working like some of the other parts that are interesting. You know, do a little, be your own teacher, be your own best critic, you know? Um, and you can really go through your poem and, and, and do that. Um, that's, I mean, it's, it's very helpful. What do you think about that? Okay. And then work to work towards making the, the entire thing just really vibrate, really feel. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. You circle the parts that don't work and it's not only circling the parts that don't work, which is like, oh, you're bad. No, no, you circle the parts that don't work and then write, why aren't they working? What would make this really fun? What would energize this? What's missing, yeah. you know? And look yeah. at the, maybe the parts that are exciting and say, oh, see this, I, I used a lot of detail. I really got specific with the character. I was really telling a story. I was, I was telling something instead of just, just, you know, impressing myself with my own use of language, you right. know, things like that. You can look at it and say, you yeah, know, no, I've really got to get back into the feet of the body of the character, you know? You can write some of this stuff, like jot some of this stuff down Yeah. on the draft, okay. Yeah, 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 write it right in the mark, right all over the page. You know, if you print out, you know, I do, and you print out and you write it all over the page. This, this part right here, this is what this needs, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so we're, are we, you know, physician heal thyself, not a, I think that's a quote. 
So anyway, we're our own, we can be our own doctor in that, you know? Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. All right, we have a question from Jonathan. Jonathan, are you there? Yes, hi there. Hi, Jonathan. Um, Thank you. As everyone else says, um, this is actually my mom and I actually both oh. do this. She's oh. on it as well. She's in Pennsylvania. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So it's fun. Uh, so thank you for all of that. Um, my question is kind of about narrative structure. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, uh, so I'm a director that dabbles in playwriting uh -huh. and I'm always like, okay, what's the inciting incident? What's the climax? What's the resolve? Like, what's the new world order? And I was just curious if you have any, not formulas, but questions of like how this best to do this in writing a play. Um, that's sort of where my question starts. Right, so to, to, to those, those words, inciting incident what were they i mean i was like fascinated by these words inciting all the things we learned in literature class when we were in grade school or right. something exciting and i know it's funny i never learned those things and i'm always you know my students at nyu they they use those terms and i'm fascinated by them i'm like oh wow there's a term inciting incident and, <laughs> and brand new order or whatever yeah, and all the points in between yeah um yep. no, no 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 it's hysterical I mean, it's great, but like, so the, it's kind of, uh, you, well, it sounds like you've got the formula already. <laughs> what, do you, what do you need? Does it come out feeling formulaic? I guess the question is, is, you know, sometimes I feel like it's less of a drama and more pedestrian, if that makes sense. You know, so like, why am I telling this story today? And so just kind of massaging that and trying to make it a little bit more exciting or a little bit more dramatic uh, that yes yeah well the question um, uh, that i often have and regardless of the form is how much skin does the writer have in the game and oftentimes i'm talking about this because some people think oh i can just write about anybody i want and they haven't done they haven't earned the right anybody can write about anything but you got to earn it you know right it, and regardless of who you're writing about you got to put the time in and earn it so I always ask myself, how much skin does the writer have in the game, right? Yeah. How much, why do, why do you want to write that? Why does she want to write such and such? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you can, and you don't have to like have, you know, six months of therapy and figure it out. You just got to get specific. You got to dig deep into those characters, yeah. you know? And because and I want to make money and be on Broadway, I'm sorry, for me, for my taste it's not fucking good enough sorry and there are a lot of people who do write like that because they want to be you know on the cover of some magazine having written something salacious or whatever not not my cup of tea but you know yeah. it's it's what the marketplace is interested in sometimes um but you really gotta you gotta dig deep into your characters why is this interesting to me mm -hmm. you know what's in it for me what am i trying to work through you know, yeah. we're, you know, that kind of thing. So once you start, so if you, if it feels kind of pedestrian or kind of like me, you know, um, then you got to ask yourself, why did I want to write this? Okay. Why do I, Jane is going to the bakery and it's a play, huh? What is it? <laughs> you know, the baker, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it would be about, but wow, you know, and I don't know. No, that, that makes sense. And I, I think, yeah, I think I get lost in the, well, I direct a play and so it has to have this, this and this. And it's like, wait, what's the story? Like, right. why, why, why is this story so important? Right, important to, to, and as a director, you come to a text and you have to ask the same question. Cause when you decide to direct a play, you're gonna be in a relationship with that play for a long time, a year or more, you know? And yeah. you're gonna be enmeshed, embedded with that play. so. You got to know why it is that you want to work on it. You yeah. Know? No, that that helps. Okay. Can I ask a practical question just sure. because I'm also new to this? Sure. When you, I've written a lot. And so after you write a bunch, do you then just 
transpose that into computer format and then you know and then start because i've written non-linearly meaning mm -hmm. like i've jumped around a bunch but just mm -hmm. a practical well so you've written like longhand in your notebook you're saying yes mm -hmm. okay great and you so yeah you can just spend some time typing it out okay that's the first thing then print it out then start looking at it and going okay what's the structure of this beautiful thing that i'm making okay what's the story yeah. are there characters what are they doing you know just start should start shaping it in some way that's pleasing to you okay okay great. thank you yeah. so much thank i really so appreciate much. it great questions thank you thanks jonathan looks like we have a question from joan joan are you there yes i am can you hear me yes oh good hello hi joan <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, call. I'm a writer, and I'm calling from uh, Denver from the ambience of my bedroom. I, I hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, love it, love it. I, I wanted to thank you for Wednesday. That was my first experience here, and I was so um, I don't know what inspired. I wrote till midnight, so I wrote about five hours after the call. I, I have a question, and I hope you can help me uh, with this. Um, uh, I'm basically adapting or trying to adapt a book that I wrote. And per your last uh, uh, dialogue there, uh, it's very personal. It's, uh, it's a story of a relative rags to riches in early Brooklyn. And it goes from 1854 to 2011, where he basically saves you know, the author, author's life. My question is, it's really, really hard to distill a book into a play. Because of course, in a book, you can go on and on. But I'm finding, and I've written most of the play already, but I'm finding that to distill and have meaningful dialogue between the characters in, in the book um, is difficult. And I was thinking that also, say, with The Godfather, <laughs> you know, that they made that into three movies, basically, to tell that time frame. But I found out something very interesting. I had um, I have a narrator uh, in in the in the play, and I was thinking this is going to work really good. I'm going to do it like our town, and it's going to be very interesting. It wasn't interesting. It was very boring. And someone said, "Don't have that narrator come out and talk. You know, do something different." So my problem was, how in the world am I going to tell this story, uh, which spans Brooklyn, New York, and Ireland, without? a narrator in there. So what I came up with, and that's what I want to ask you about this, if you've ever seen this or if it's effective, I've included the narrator. And of course, his, his outfit changes as the years go by. But he does appear on the stage and he does address the audience. But what I did on this, and I, I hope it works, it's sort of whimsical. And every now and then, he, he, he is invisible to the characters in the play. Uh, but he does some physical things, you know, to kind of, in other words, like he'll, um, he'll open the door for someone or in one, in one aspect of it, uh, the author is having coffee with a coworker and telling about how she wants to, you know, find out about the relative. And so when the conversation is over, he goes around to the desk and he takes away the coffee and the rolls, you know, and whatever. And he does react with facial reactions and with his posture to the things that are being said about him throughout the play and in the end of the play uh, he saves the author's life it's a 9-11 type of rescue and you realize that all throughout the play uh, he is helping the characters along he's kind of like a helper and I'm wondering um, in your experience have you ever seen anything like that where there is a narrator but he's also uh, like a pantomime almost like a whimsical uh, type of, of helper on the stage. And, and is, that, um, is that acceptable? Have you seen that? That's my question. <laughs> wow, Joan, I, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen it. I may have. I mean, Ariel is, is invisible in the Tempest for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Ariel yeah. does, to, you know. I mean, Prospero creates, you know, what do you, they call you know what a fairy sprites or whatever they're called to do things yeah. um i i think what's most interesting to me is uh what does the that character have at stake you know how how much are they a part of the story well, it, so everything. He's everything. everything great great He's and you don't but you don't want them you don't want them to talk at all except oh he will talk to the audience oh. yes oh, okay 
but not to the characters, you know, on stage. He's okay. basically invisible. Oh, he, he is the protagonist. Right, Absolutely. right, 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 yeah. right. Okay, okay. No, I think that's, go for it. That's fine. That's fine. But just continue to, you know, um, be judicious in your selection of material. You have to choose, you know, what to leave in and what to leave out and choose the things that are most dramatically urgent and resonant. And don't include something just because you wrote it beautifully in another form, you know, you know what I mean? So you have this beautiful novel and you want to just be, be mindful about, okay, I'm going to put this in this. And you can also invent new things that will be maybe more dramatically interesting um, for your play. You and it can be me on, on Wednesday, uh, you made a very good comment that was very uh, resonant uh, with me. And you were saying that with the protagonist, um, if there's anything that detracts or doesn't move it along or something that's not really important to the pr protagonist, get rid of it. And that helped me. That helped me cut through a lot of things that were important to me, but didn't necessarily move that story along. So yeah, thank you. And you're welcome, Joan. And, and, you know, people, we can stay up long hours and discuss that point. I, it's something that I believe in. I'm a, a writer who loves to cut. There are writers who don't like to cut and want to keep every great idea they've ever had in their plays or novels or screenplays. And I'm not like that. So, you know, just realize it's coming from a writer, me, who actually enjoys trimming and getting it slim and trim. And I want everything to be, you know, impactful. You know what I'm saying? So it's a taste thing, but it's, and it's just my advice. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One other quick one. How, how long is like, say your basic play these days? Is yeah. it about 70 pages? Does I don't it, know. 90 no? pages, 120. <laughs> I don't know. It can be more than one. You know, it can be in many parts. Just write it so that you feel the story is being told. All you right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, Joan. We have about five minutes left. Um, we do have a question from Faye. Faye, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Hi there. Hi. Hey, so my question is about how important it is or when it is important to really understand what you're trying to write about. Um, so I, um, I was talking to a friend who's writing the other day and she was saying she's really interested in the question of how people make decisions in really difficult times. So she had a scene, she was exploring that. Um, and that was kind of driving her piece. And I just submitted a short piece, my first short piece to a, a festival. And I was thinking after she said that, and I realized I don't really even know exactly what this was about. Like, and I think it's about the question of like dr the dramatic question, like to be driving a story. And, and frequently I just start with a character in a scene and I don't know what, why this character comes to my head. And, and, and so I'm just, that whole question about how and why and when do you need to know what yeah not the, great, not the topic great. just like what's motivating the whole yeah, thing yeah and Faye I mean you wrote a whole play and liked it enough to send it in and you didn't even know what you're writing about I mean good well, for you kind of no. kind of did you. no because I mean that's where I was I was busting on Jonathan a minute ago you know all these you know term you know inciting incident and you know it's like wow yeah. you know I hear those and I think wow how exciting I I don't understand any of them but <laughs> But, but hooray, they're, because they're useful um, if you need them. They're useful tools. So sometimes people will need to know uh, what their play is about to write it. I mean, what their play is trying to say, is that what you mean? Um, yeah, what it's, yes, I guess, what yeah. it's trying to say. Yeah, yeah. what it's yeah. trying to say, yeah. what it's trying to understand. Yeah. Like there's yeah. like one thing. I mean, this play was about yeah. a bunch of things, yeah. but. But yeah, sometimes I, it's just about a character in a situation. And I don't right, really know. Right. And I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I really, th I, my own personal, when I hear people distill their plays down to, you know, one sentence, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's all it's, but you went on for two hours, you know, mm -hmm. you know, just talking to me uh, on a stage and all that when it was about, you know, homelessness is bad, you know, great. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the plays I love, I mean, like King Lear, you know, what's King Lear about in a sentence? You know what I'm saying? It's not a test. I'm just saying, right right, right, right? right. I mean, yeah, it's about like a lot of things and it's, you know, and so those are the kinds of plays that I appreciate. 
things that are about a lot of things. And like Ernest Hemingway said, if you want to send a message, go to Western Union. So, you know, I think it's okay that you wrote a whole play and you sent it off and you feel good about it and you can't really distill what it's about or what the message is in one sentence. But if you were stuck, I would encourage you to ask yourself things like, what do the characters want? What are they trying to do? You know, and, and I, I'm not sure if you ask me any one of anything I've ever written, screenplays, plays, songs, movies, everything. I don't know what any of them are about. I mean, I can tell you the story, but what the issue is, you know, I, I leave that to the scholars to write about. I, I don't know. That's not where my creative juice rests. So, you know, it's just a taste thing, but. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Faye. All right. It is 559. Let's see. Anybody else have a really quick question? I'll have a really quick answer. <laughs> um, M. Wicker, are you there? Yes. Quick question? Quick question. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm, I'm new at this. I'm trying to, to develop a relationship between two people who are kind of exploring a relationship, but they speak a different language. There's a language barrier involved. And what are the complications of, of exploring that? And have you ever had a situation where you've done that in your plays? And, and how have you gone about it? Oh, wow. So they speak different languages and, need, and there, is no, there is no common language between them. No, there's a couple of her people who have served as, you know, kind of interpreters, but eventually they're going to have to talk to each other. And one of them speaks a little English, the other one speaks a little Spanish, but because of the circumstance they're in, they're, there's something they want to explore. And, and uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. what, are, what are the pitfalls or how do you go about doing that? No, I, it sounds like a great, it sounds like a beautiful, great play, man. Um, I would say just focus on what the character, again, focus on what the characters want. And you know, if they want, if they're sitting down for a meal, and whatever, you know, if just focus on the given circumstances. Like, what is the scene, for lack of a better phrase, about? Like, what's happening in this scene? You know, they're sitting down, or they're making dinner together, right? Or whatever, whatever the scene is, you know. Um, and just focus on what is happening in this scene. What do my characters want? And the language will find a way. You know yeah. what I mean? And even if it's, you know, a, a language that the audience has to piece together as it's mm -hmm. a little bit of English, a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of something else, a, a little bit of that and this, you know, um, it's going to be really beautiful because their desire will be driving the conversation, not necessarily the words they choose necessarily. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Thank you. It's Friday. It is Friday. Friday. Yay. We will be back here on Monday. Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so just a reminder, you can sign up to be in each day Zoom class at publictheater.org by 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time each day. We will email the Zoom link out between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Next week's links are already up on the website. Um, so thank you all and see Great. you all on Monday.